Hey guys, it's Mini TV here once again with another video. Um, but today, actually, uh, we're going to do a slightly different video. Normally, I've been doing uh, the Immortal Way, where I sort of have an hour-long video, really getting in depth and explaining a particular hero uh, in the offlane and showing you how to play and knowing kind of everything about that hero and how to play and how to dominate with it. Um, but today, um, we're actually going to do um, this sort of series I've been calling uh, Minis Managing Pub Stompers, uh, which is really I'm trying to identify ways to deal with heroes that are so hard to deal with and you know trying to deal with these heroes that are very cheesy perhaps and whenever you play against them you're losing against them because they're just these you know these pub stompers um, type of heroes so things like you know brood mother meepo um, etc 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 um, and today actually um, we're going to be doing um, enchantress uh, now as a hero I actually I've been playing quite a lot and I've been crushing basically every single game destroying the lane and then therefore going ahead and kind of carrying uh, with it a lot of people have been sort of saying to me that um they really don't know how to deal with enchantress um and they want a way they want to know how to deal with her uh, and then they can go ahead and beat her and, and then deal with it um so this this sort of this video is a bit different instead of me showing you how to sort of destroy the hero i'm going to show you a way to destroy this hero or destroy that hero a way to counter her and kind of go in depth with it um the video will be a little bit shorter uh, than my hour long videos i'm just sort of trying to sort of change up the content uh, let me know if you like it uh, and we'll go from there but to start off with we're just going to talk about enchantress what makes her strong and then once we understand what makes her strong we can kind of you know exploit her weaknesses and go from there hopefully it will help so uh, we know Enchantress is an incredibly strong offlaner a hero that actually has been picked up quite a lot particularly um, in the summit 10 and um, the last pro dot two tournament and um, pain gaming have been sort of been abusing it a lot and with the offlane at Lelis and uh, just been kind of crushing and, and causing a lot of annoyance really um, to any team they play. Um, so what makes her so strong? Um, well, first of all, she's a, an incredibly strong laner uh, and can really lane against a lot of lanes and, and do well and almost crush it. Um, her untouchable obviously makes her almost really very very difficult to be kind of harassed through right clicks because the attacks low against her particularly at the higher levels like you know 70 attack speed slow at level 320 level 5 you know a lot of heroes don't even have that attack speed you know they have a very low attack speed at lower levels so having this you know immense attack slow um, at very early levels is very hard to sort of harass her out through right clicks and um, her enchant can be annoying because it's a way to continue her really harass um, by chasing an enemy hero but also can obviously um, charm a neutral creep and then having extra units to sort of um, harass and, and deal with um, you know stuns or slows depending on what the creep is and um, to really harass um, the enemy carry which is so annoying to deal with because you know these these creeps have like eight nine hundred HP it's very hard to kill them particularly early levels uh, and because of that you know it's like how do I deal with two or three different units in the lane to deal with um, her nature's attendance probably the most annoying skill really um, is that every time you think you can kill her um, she gets a, you know, a crazy amount of burst heal and just when you think you have enough to kill her um, she gets this off and, and continues to heal and the amount of time that you, you know I've turned ganks with this spell is so frustrating so you're so close to kill her but then pops this off and, and she's fine and then in impetus, um, basically there's the seal that whenever she hits level six, you can barely no longer lane against her. I don't think there's barely any carry that can sit in the lane while she's spamming impetus at her, which is you know just a way to sort of bully and dominate the lane. So again, very very annoying skills. Um, but what we're going to do, as I said before, is, is how to sort of deal with, deal around her. So if we kind of even look at each individual skill, you'll realise that, yes, there's a lot of strengths in each individual skill, but there's some ways to exploit it and work around it as well. So first off, her untouchable, probably, you know, there's probably three ways, I think, um, that makes her very annoying. Um, and untouchable is definitely one of them. So obviously attack slow um, means she can't really be you know, harassed for right clicks. Now, the best way to sort of deal with this is really having um, magic harassers, um, because obviously you still need to be harassing the offlaner as, as a support or, you know, as you know if you're in the safe lane harassing her um but you can't really do it through right clicks particularly when she gets level three level five but having you know magic um harass because she has quite low hp pool so if you have you know heroes like skyrath mage um phoenix uh like any 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 good support or even you know carry or safe lane um heroes that have 
these kind of nukes that can be continually thrown out, like Lashrak. Any of those heroes can, you know, is a good way to deal with her. Lashrak especially, because although it's physical damage, you know, it's still a spell and it's not through right clicks and doesn't be affected by attack slow. Um, because she has such a low um, HP pool, I think she only has like maybe 540 HP base. Um, so these kind of low magic or low um, low HP pools are, you know, very it be able to be exploited through um, magic damage. Um, so you know, think about having heroes like that that can deal with her um, and deal with her untouchable. Um, as for the heal, um, it's you know it's it is very frustrating to deal with, and, it, and it's but it's not it's not an instant heal. You know, it's not like um, Omni Knight's purification. It's an overtime heal. So the best way to deal with that is is to have burst. You know, so if you're perhaps. Um, running a tri lane against her, you know, you can kill her either before um, she casts it or before, you know, the heal has been elongated. Having that kind of magic burst or even physical burst, for example, um, to crush her can kill her before she gets the heal off is a, is a great way. Um, as for as for the enchant as well, a hero like Crystal Maiden can be useful because um, obviously the frostbite works for 10 seconds on neutral creeps, which kind of nullifies um, the neutral creeps completely. As for the impetus, I mean, really, there isn't like a great way um, around it um, because the, the, the spell, when she gets level 6, just kind of forces almost any carry hero out of the lane. But you can work around that, like... Um, and by what I mean by that is that yes, you might not be able to sort of directly deal with impetus because the amount of damage is, is you know ridiculous. What you can do is either one trying to sort of um, limit and or kind of slow her down before she gets level six. Because really, level six is where she becomes a real pain to deal with in the lane. Before that, yes, she's annoying, has you know throws a lot of right clicks out, and it's hard to kill. But it's level six really is the point where she becomes really un un dealable really so you know you can run a tri lane kind of force her out of xp range like i was playing um, a game earlier which i will probably show uh, where i was laying against an ursa and another support hero and they just you know they ran at me every single time uh, they had the opportunity to really sort of force me back not allowing me to get level six because when i do get level six you know the lane is over i've already won it i'm just gonna you know keep spamming out impetus and that's when the carry hero has to just leave so if you can kind of um limit her tempoing to that sort of level six timing can be really good um secondly as well is that you know just you know forcing yourself out of the lane isn't that bad if you've got a hero that can jungle early level early in early levels heroes like perhaps luna and perhaps terrorblade or sven for example these heroes that they kind of want to go to the jungle anyway so you know if you can kind of get as much as you can before level six um and then rotate to the jungle Particularly if like your support hero has been maybe stacking, it can be quite good actually. You know, and and you're not in. It's not the worst thing. Obviously, if you're playing a hero like Spectre that wants to sort of sit in the lane and just AFK and try and get as much as you can, then yeah, you're going to be crushed because, you know, you're you're gonna you want to stay in the lane and and Chantra is going to push you out and you can't really jungle. But heroes like Sven, Terrorblade, these heroes that want to go jungle, you know, picking those heroes are actually not too bad because you know it's a natural rotation for you to go to the jungle. So things like that can can definitely work around. It's just really important to note, though, is that when you play against Enchantress, it's really important, if you can, to keep up your tier 1 tower. Because once she takes that, then you know she can invade your jungle and maybe rotate to mid. And so keeping um, that tier 1 tower up is really important. And the best way to do that, really, is really to have a support that can kind of um, take the lane while you go into the jungle. Particularly a hero that can kind of push out the wave um, fast enough that... It, you know, it allows her creeps to not be attacking your tower. So if heroes like Phoenix, heroes like Winter Wyvern, these heroes that can push out the wave and therefore protect your tier one tower and thus kind of still keep a lot of map control. Because when you play Enchantress, you want to kind of force the tier one tower down and then kind of continue um, controlling the map and pushing in your advantage and pushing um, more into the enemy half of the map. So if you can keep your tier one tower up, um, it's a great way to kind of deal and limit Enchantress's power in the lane. So just quickly going over a few heroes that I think are, are quite good um, to deal with Enchantress. Um, we mentioned a few support heroes um, that do a lot of magic burst or sort of magic harass. Heroes like Skyrath Mage, for example. Um, Warlock to an extent, um, because you can kind of heal um, the harass that around Enchantress does to either you or your carry, but also you can put the dot on onto 
onto her as well for a bit of magic burst. Um, heroes like Ursa actually are really quite good um, because you can do one of two things. One, obviously, um, with the Fury Swipes, the amount of attack speed you get can completely nullify uh, the Untouchable. Obviously, his bonus attack speed is like 400. Um, the Untouchable goes up to 170 at level 7, so it kind of completely nullifies uh, that. Um, but not only that, with, with Ursa as well, I mentioned briefly before how you can kind of box Enchantress out and really run at her, particularly if you build, you know, you get face boots or maybe even a wind lace on Ursa, you can run down Enchantress and really be make her fear to come up to the lane or she'll feed. And because of that, you know, you can kind of, uh, slow her um, level, uh, slow her to get to level six, and, and can really kind of slow her down that way. Um, but other kind of heroes, as I mentioned before, that want to go into the jungle, you know, Luna, Terrorblade, that can kind of jungle early. Uh, those are good. Um, but even running like a, any kind of regular tri lane against her um, can be a great way in dealing with her. Um, I mean, it's a shame that you have to sort of commit a lot of resources to deal with her because she's just that strong of a hero. But the thing about Enchantress is that I think the main strength of her is her laning phase. So if you can kind of nullify her laning phase, she doesn't do too well. She doesn't farm that effectively. Um, so sometimes she's forced to go Midas or even like, you know, um, Maelstrom, for example, to kind of keep up her farm. Um, she, you know, doesn't have really any lockdown. Um, and so, you know, her team fight potential isn't the greatest. She can't split push that effectively. Um, her main thing really is her laning phase. And, and that's what makes her snowball and really kind of become a pub stomping hero. So if you can kind of stop that in her tracks by running a tri lane, you can really nullify her effectiveness as a hero and go from there. So even run like a regular tri lane. So those are the kind of heroes that I like to play against her. Um, to be honest, there isn't you know that many that are great against her. Um, Jug, to be fair, is another one. Has a lot of magic damage and has a healing ward to sort of deal with her harassment potential and can still jungle if he needs to as well. Um, but like I said, those are the sort of few heroes that I like to play against her. Um, but now what I want to sort of show a bit of gameplay footage of um, hit of people and pro players um, dealing uh, with Enchantress and uh, to trying to reduce her effectiveness. Hey guys, so this is just um, a really, really um, high um, immortal game. If you sort of see the ranks here, they're like um, pretty high, like rank 290, rank 156, uh, rank 278 um, is the Enchantress I was sort of going to show about this game. It's a really um, high pro, uh, pro game um, that I was watching just today, um, and I thought this game was really good actually, because I was looking um, to watch you know, how does uh, Enchantress play, but ended up actually um, the Radiant team here dealt with her um, really, really well actually, and we'll go on to talk about it. Um, as you sort of see here, her items are actually pretty um, pretty good considering um, that she uh, wants to have a lot of stats really because this Phoenix will kind of harass her uh, quite a lot. Um, so first off, like they really try and con control the runes here. Like they ran, they send actually four heroes, as you see on on, on the radiant side here, to deal with um, to deal with this enchantress. And that's kind of a good a good thing to do. Just sort of it sets the tempo for the game. It allows that sort of uh, allows the radiant team to kind of control the runes. And go straight away from there. So, just to sort of talk about off immediately, like this Phoenix is training with the Enchantress. Now, the Enchantress knows that she can man up against the Enchantress, right? Like, she knows she has the heal um, and she knows that she can kind of probably win the trade. But immediately, what the Phoenix is doing is sort of allowing a lot of space for, for the for the um, Faceless Void to get a lot of last hits. Like, and it comes down to a lot of the support play, kind of really forcing out uh, the Enchantress as much as much as he can. Obviously, now Pudge gets involved, and so now Phoenix is forced to deal um, with the Pudge. But you see, like every single time, this is where the magic harassment comes in. So it doesn't even matter um, when she gets level two, level three, gets more points than touchable. Phoenix's um, fire, uh, fire spirits not only does damage, but slows the harassment from Enchantress on to, to the Faceless Void as well. Um, and what really, what the whole kind of um, game plan for Radiant um, is in this lane for the first, say, 10 to 12 minutes is just trying to get Void as much farm as he can in this lane. Um, and so the best way for Phoenix to do that is either one of two things, either to harass the offlaner as best as he can, or to pull the lane, which he's doing right here. By pulling the lane, it either forces Pudge to come over and deal with Phoenix, as well as that, though, it forces the enemy creep wave to be under Void's tower. And by doing that, then, you know, there's not really much that Pudge or Enchantress can do if the creep wave is under Void's tower, because Void can just see us quite, quite effectively. Now, you see Enchantress was probably did the right thing here, picked up the uh, Enchant here, 
uh, and she's just sort of denying a lot of the creeps. And this is where I mentioned a bit about how Crystal Maiden can be quite good um, sort of to deal with, you know, creeps like this. But still, Void's getting quite a bit of CS, like which he probably wouldn't do um, if the lane was further out. But because it's under the tower, because Phoenix is continually pulling, you know, it, it allows this lane that would be very, very difficult for Void to deal with um, have at least something um, to farm because... You know, Phoenix is continually pulling as much as he can. Pulled at 145, uh, and so because of that, um, the pull is available as well. But as you see here, Pudge played, you know, got a nice illusion room and is blocking the pull camp as well. So a lot of kind of nice plays from both sides, really. I like that Enchant just picked up Enchant instead of the Untouchable, so I could, you know, harass better and CS better. And Pudge is really annoying the Phoenix who wants to be pulling as much as he can. As you see, he's trying to kill the illusion here, but Pudge is probably going to walk in and block the pull anyway. But Void, look, he's pulling for himself here, knows that all he needs to do, you know, is try and get his, trying to get levels and uh, and to get as much farm as he can before Enchantress gets level 6. So only a little range creep here, but it's still something and it's better than nothing, you know. Um, but as you see, every single time Void comes up, he's going to get, you know, continually um, harassed and hit. Good thing to note as well is um, we didn't see initially but uh, Void had sort of two sets of Tangos and obviously Stout Shield, which is pretty you know common nowadays. But you need to have a lot of regen where, when dealing with Enchantress um, because she will simply just sort of burn all the regen from harassment. But again, pulling as much as you can. The pull camp was blocked by Pudge, but they're using um, the hard camp here as well just to kind of create a bit more chaos. Like in a lane that you should be losing, like Void and Phoenix isn't really the strongest lane and they really should be losing um, to this Enchantress. But because of the kind of added chaos and pulls and stuff, like it doesn't allow Enchantress and Pudge to do the job they want to really harass and do a lot of damage. Like they're pulling the creep wave, forcing this wave up here. Enchantress then can't really um, attack the Void, and so Void can see us under tower. Like, yeah. You know, Void and Phoenix aren't really winning this lane, like 11 and 3. But honestly, like I've seen lanes go a lot worse than this. And because what they're doing, they're actually doing okay. Void's running out of regen now, so probably will have to buy some regen when he can. Um, but they're doing okay, honestly. Like, um, it's they're not they haven't lost. They still got like their tower is still at full HP at five minutes in. They haven't died yet. Um, and I think that you know the the hero of choice here was was pretty smart as well. Like, um, you know, Void probably shouldn't be dying in this lane at all unless he kind of misplays um, or gets hooked with time walk on cooldown but having time walk um, allows him always to kind of not only get rid of um, a lot of harassment but also uh, get away from any kind of ganks or, or hooks from Pudge as well so the guy used the shrine here but there was actually Phoenix gives him a salve as well so always learn to be in lane so level 4 pretty decent to be honest and, and now they're like kind of forfeit in the lane just to try and kill Pudge here, which is definitely the right decision. Like, Enchantress is sort of trying to focus on the lane, but because of that, they, they almost bring down uh, Void, but I don't think Void's going to be able to catch the Pudge in, instead. But they get um, one rune, which is, you know, better than nothing. Um, and still, you know, Enchantress has now picked up Treads, though, so it's like it's starting to get even harder for this Void. Like, he just he was just given a salve, and yet immediately, look how much damage he's taken. And you're starting to see the kind of harassment and the kind of strength from a whew, close hook um from from enchantress and there's not much that they can kind of do and it's only going to get worse at level six but they use a shrine trying to keep up as much as possible void's actually going to try and rush midas here which um i can understand because like he hasn't had the greatest lane and he wants to recover um but i think he will need to buy a few more bits of regent or also, because he's going to be eventually forced in um, to the jungle when Enchantress gets level six. So trying to give him any kind of um, kind of help in in farming the jungle w would be uh, would be ideal. So perhaps maybe going treads would be even better. But again, pulling the the wave, um, Phoenix is doing a great job. Like yes, they're kind of diving the void here a little bit, but. You know, this is dangerous. Like, if there's a TP coming in from the clockwork or perhaps from the mid, like, and you're seeing, they realize, you know, Enchantress and Pudge are well overextending, and thus gives Void, again, a whole creep wave or two under the, under the wave. Time walk every time he gets hit by a hook, and he's fine. Closing on level five now, and, like, 
it's is pretty good, like, um, considering Enchanted is such a strong lane. Look, 26 CS versus 23. Yes, Enchanted has a lot of deniers, but um, I've seen lanes go a lot worse than this, and it's thanks to Phoenix um, pulling the lane as much as she can and Void realising that he's just trying to play safe and trying to get his CS and, and not really trying to win this lane. Like, they're not trying to win this lane, they're just trying to cope with it. And that's the kind of mentality. I think a lot of people have this mentality in pubs where... Um, they try and win every lane they're in, but some lanes, you know, they're unwinnable. So just trying to um, minimise the damage um, can be great. Not only that though, as well, but like you see the position forward doing kind of a good job helping this lane as well. He rotates mid. You saw a Pudge TP uh, try and TP over to the other lane. So obviously, if your other lanes are doing well, it will have an impact on your lane as well because you know, of course, Pudge didn't actually get a TP off there, but say he did. If Pudge TP'd mid, then it would be 2v1, which again, even uh, helps um, Void and the Phoenix lane even more. So, you know, if your other lanes are doing well, then it's going to help yours as well. It's, you know, you know, Dota, particularly in the early laning stages, isn't played in a Void, you know. Your other lanes and your other teammates will have an impact um, on how well you do in the lane. But there's, there's a point in this game, I think in the next, say, two or three minutes, there's something that I really, really like um, what the Radiant side do here, particularly the Phoenix and um, and uh, the Void. So now in charge of level six, and like you seeing the pet pressure and the damage that she can, she can put off. Once she hits level six, there's no way that Void um, can do anything about this lane. So he realizes, look, I'm going to TP top farm this jungle. And this is the point I've mentioned before. When in charge gets level six, you have to completely forfeit the lane. But this, watch what the Phoenix does here. Like this is the point where you think as Enchantress, look, perfect. No one's in my lane. I can take this T1 tower and I can start putting pressure on on the map, putting kind of control, you know, stamp my authority on this game. But Phoenix does a great job here. He doesn't just sort of completely leave the lane and allow, yes, realising that this Enchantress is you know, very hard to deal with. Instead, he plays in the shadows and forces the enemy wave out here, chucking fire spirits, using Icarus Dive when he can. And what this does, actually, is yes, Enchantress is going to get all the CS. He's going to deny everything, literally denied every single creep wave there. But what this Phoenix wants to do is to kind of create um, space and pressure off of this T1 tower. It doesn't matter if every you know he, he doesn't get any CS here, but as long as he keeps his T1 tower up, it has such an impact on this game that it, he's doing such a fantastic job. Comes in, wards a little bit. He doesn't even want the, to get the XP. All he wants to do is to stop this creep wave hitting his tower. And I think he does a great job at doing it. Yes, you know, Enchantress is getting loads of CS. You know, he's going to be probably like nearing the, the top net worth. But, you know, he, this Phoenix single-handedly is dealing with the game plan of a level 7 Enchantress. And and while Void is making space, he's using Chronos, he's getting kills, he's got Midas farming on all the parts of the map. All while this Phoenix is kind of handling this Enchantress, doing some nice jukes in the fog here, like and really slowing down this Enchantress. I think if Enchantress was, say, in that fight top, or at least dominating this bot lane... Um, then Dyer would have such a bigger impact in this game. Instead, like, what ends up happening in this game, because I don't think I'm going to show the whole game, I just wanted to show the laning phase. She um, she gets quite a good farm, she goes Midas, but because of what this one position five is kind of committing the, the position three with a lot more farm than him, um, and slowing slowing the enemy um, enemy kind of this off lane down, shutting this off lane down just single handedly as a phoenix, allows the rest of the four heroes from Radiant to have a bigger impact um, on the other four heroes from Dyer. And this is the point I'm trying to make. You don't need to win the off lane. You just need to try and limit the gameplay and limit the game plan of you know, Enchantress as a hero. If you can do that, then you can win win the game you might not win the lane but you can win the game which is in the end more a lot more important look now you know monkey king's gonna rotate down and now they have ways to deal with the enchantress it's just that the, the first you know seven or eight minutes is hard to deal with but when you you know are starting to get like higher levels and heroes like your mid and your position four you can kill enchantress whenever you want and I think, honestly, like Enchantress has missed a, a period of time and like an opening, really, particularly with the level five, uh, sorry, the minute five catapult and the level ten catapult. Not to take this tower. Like this, cat, this tower stays up, really, think, alive for basically the whole game. And that's just good, the good work of of the Phoenix and um, and the rest of the en enemy. Uh, so the Radiant team to rotate when they were able to. 
and I thought they did, they did a they did a great job. If I sort of skip over here, you'll see you'll, you'll sort of see like Radiant end up crushing this game because really, Enchantress, yes, she's got a Midas, she's got you know Ags as we've sort of skipped forward to sort of 35 minutes. But really, look, she's like pretty low down on the net worth in a lane that she should really have been crushing. Um, and I think that was just a good game plan with with the Void as well as the Phoenix. Like Void, you know, lost the lane and yet he's far a lot higher up on the net worth because. He realizes that his hero is going to have a bigger impact than the Enchantress as long as they have an okay laning stage. So that was just one sort of um, aspect of gameplay that I wanted to show that even if you lose your lane, um, particularly against an Enchantress, you can still win the game. And I think that's really important um, to know. So guys, um, that's the end of the video. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, um, leave a leave a like and a comment, and obviously make sure you're um, subscribing. Uh, it means a lot actually. Um, just seeing as we're trying to sort of build up the channel and uh, keep improving and keep making content um, for you guys. Uh, it was a little bit different um, than the usual content. Um, I probably will still be going along um, with the Immortal Way, um, but I wanted to have like another little playlist or another little sort of side um, content because um, a lot of people were, were saying that I like your videos, but I'm having struggle with X, Y, Z hero can you make a video about how to deal with them and hopefully this was a start uh, into kind of dealing with you know this managing these pub stomping heroes um so just for a quick conclusion obviously enchantress yes like she's very strong but as long as you can kind of deal with her laning stage which is her biggest strength then i think you can go ahead and win the game you might lose the lane and um, but you can win the game you know just don't um be upset if you start losing, you know, like losing the lane. Uh, just remember that if you can nullify her strength and her power um, in the laning phase, you can go ahead and win the game. And by nullifying her laning presence doesn't mean you have to go ahead and destroy her in the lane. It's just that you have to limit how much presence and how much impact she has in that lane. And if that means you go into the jungle and early level, um, but making sure your T1 tower is still up, um, then that is okay. You know, you don't have to win the lane. Um, all you need to do is head, go ahead and win the game because I think once the mid game goes ahead and comes around people start picking up BKBs, picking up Silver's Edge and have a lot of magic damage, you can easily deal with Enchantress. It's just those first 15 minutes, as long as you don't have a disastrous landing phase and you don't get absolutely crushed, then I think you can go ahead and deal with her quite easily. But like I said, as I said, I'll leave a little um, video from uh, some funny clips from the Summit 10 um, dinner of Enchantress just showing how ridiculous and bonkers she can be. Um, but please go ahead, guys, just subscribe. Um, if you liked it, please let me know um, and comment about what maybe another hero you want me to talk about to uh, you know deal with and manage uh, that pub stomping hero. But other than that, guys, that's, from me. that's all from me. Um, see you in the next video. Peace. So guys, um, to end it, it's just a really quite a funny clip um, from the Summit 10 from Beyond the Summit. Shout out to those guys. Do great content. Love them to bits. Um, and this is just where you're just sort of showing the, the power of Enchantress. Um, and this is actually one of the last games actually from the tournament where Pain are able to get Enchantress. So, you know, if you're struggling with Enchantress in your pubs, you can always just ban her out like they do in the pro scene and go from there. But enjoy, guys. Um, this is uh, the end of the video. Peace. Of course. Oh. Pavel's definitely a tipper. Yo, how is this Miracle still in the lane? Like, what are they trying to do here? They're oh. trying to kill the edge? Oh, Miracle's dead. I mean... Why well, is it nice defensive destruction, but he should still die. I One mean, more right click and he's gone. I mean... And now 343 is gone as well. Oh. <laughs> you're, right. He's, you're right, Rezo. He shouldn't have been there. You're not killing that hero. <laughs> they almost killed Ench, though. She was down to 80% No, HP. he was. <laughs> <laughs> she was down <laughs> to 80%. 80%? She was okay, okay. It was okay. close. <laughs> And uh, one more, guys, as well, just for the fun of it. I'm saying that the Russian is oh. pretty optimistic. Can I go for the end, or is she? No, he's gonna use okay. healing. He's and gonna just run walk away. off the rupture. It doesn't. Away. It's just it's just a butt of flesh wounds, you know. <laughs> <laughs> she actually ran off just the entire rupture. <laughs> just kept running straight. <laughs> Zero <laughs> shits given. <laughs> yeah. That's it, guys. Um, thanks again for watching. Comment, subscribe, like, all that jazz. See you next time. Peace.